in my opinion, this speaks very clearly to all of the fears and the illusions that are coming up that seem to be leading us in a brand new direction. But if you allow your ego to stop you and say, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. If you, will, if you, if you stay in a fixed energy and don't allow yourself to shift and change and grow with the situation, then that's going to really hinder you. Face that with a clear and open mind. Don't allow your pride or your ego to stop you in your tracks and say, no, I don't have to deal with this, blah, 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 whoop de whoop and all that boo shit, right? <laughs> right? Hello, everyone. Welcome to... Um, you're, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't really know what to call this session <clears throat> anymore or right now. I mean, technically it would be morning coffee again, just like yesterday. It's first thing in the morning. I've got my coffee and we're going to be doing, uh, having a chat, uh, about the energies and also the transits. And, um, now that I'm working with astrology more, um, I am in the process of continuing to watch the daily transits and see how that's working with us. So that does take away the, a lot of the timeless element of this session. So for now, we're going to call it morning coffee. Um, but I'm working on finding a new title for this, a new <laughs> label, because I am wanting to incorporate more of this into these daily sessions. And so, um, I guess we can still call it morning coffee. Sure. That makes sense, but it's going to be less timeless than it used to be. Um, of course, uh, I am going to be talking about some of the transits that are going on today and I want to continue doing that moving forward. And then obviously I'm definitely going to get into the cards and when we really, and, and even though, you know, we're talking about what's happening on a given day. So today is June 1st, excuse me. Today's June 1st. Welcome to June guys. Um, even though we're going to be talking about transits on a more daily basis, it still can be somewhat timeless. Again, energies are fluid. All right. So there, like I said yesterday, there's no like real ending point between the end. Did I say that yesterday? It doesn't matter. So anyway, um, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about what's going on in the, in the sky and how that could potentially be affecting us. And then we're going to get into some cards. Yeah. So before I get into anything, let's get into this and just get settled. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and life circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's get into this. Um, where do I want to start? Transit report. All right. So as we all know, Mercury is still in retrograde, going to be in retrograde for basically almost the entire month of June. Mercury does not station direct until the 23rd of June. The 24th is our next full moon. All right. So let's talk about this. Um, the aspect, uh, the aspect of the day that I saw, um, in my opinion is Mercury squaring Neptune. <laughs> this is troubling. Um, a square is a challenging aspect, but I am working on ever since I started, you know, really focusing on astrology and looking at it from a really, you know, level point of view. I'm starting to come to the conclusion that even though there are challenging aspects and challenging placements, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Yes, you're going to be going through certain struggles, certain challenges, whatnot, whatever, but that is all providing you with an opportunity, opportunity to learn and to grow, okay? That's the point here. So even though this is a challenging aspect, it still is providing you with a, play, with a chance to grow and expand. All right, and we do have some supporting aspects along with that, but let's start here. Mercury is squaring Neptune. 
Mercury is the planet of your mind, of your thoughts, of the intellect, of learning, science, um, and communication, writing, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Neptune is the planet of illusion, of the depths, you could say. Um, is a, it's kind of a debaucherous planet sometimes. Neptune is where you get into like a pretty deep party aspect. You know, if you were, if you were to really get lost in the depths of Neptune, which is quite easy to do, you know, you may find yourself in a completely illusion-based reality. Neptune rules the illusion, okay? Um, but with Mercury squaring Neptune, I will, I will definitely say that illusions, your inner reality, the illusions of your inner reality, some of the deepest illusions that you, or beliefs about yourself that you hold, are potentially on the forefront of your mind today. I know for a fact that I woke up on the absolute wrong side of the bed this morning. But when I did that, my thoughts surrounding that were all about my fears and what is illusionary about like what I, what I, the, the beliefs that I've built up or the thought processes that I've built up that are illusionary, that have no real basis in reality, okay? It's literally just fears. But this is technically, this potentially could be a good thing, okay? Um, fears may be highlighted today, but do not run from them because with this square with Mercury, you are, you are being provided with a chance to see how the how your illusions and your thoughts are kind of coinciding with each other um, uh, in in very uh, how how your belief system or uh, uh, I'm sorry you have the opportunity to start to understand or start to see how your illusions really are not based in reality okay with this square with Mercury so don't run from anything that comes up any sort of illusions or fears that come up today. If you can take some time to really sit with yourself or be with yourself, be in a little bit of solitude and just allow yourself to observe and work through what comes up today or moving forward, do so. Take as much time as you as you need to. Take much as much time as you possibly can, because even though you know all of this stuff may be coming up right now, it kind of is providing you with like a sort of springboard to move past those illusions, to move past those fears. Okay, now that's the major aspect that I saw of the day, and that's the I would say that's the biggest troubling aspect. However, there are so many supporting aspects surrounding this situation for you that can help uplift you and help you move through this in a, in a, in a productive and an effective manner. Now, I do want to say that this time period right now for the next few days, I don't know how exactly long I haven't, I didn't see that just yet. I didn't look that far in the future, but um, keep in mind that this time period right now probably is not the best time period for taking any sort of real uh, 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 guided or um, conscious action. You actually may be feeling quite indecisive right now, and that's because Mars is in Gemini, okay? So, but this is, so this is not supportive of taking action, but it is supportive of your mental process that you're going through right now, because Mars in Gemini is an excellent placement for learning, for understanding, for doing research, for wrapping your mind around maybe some, some, abstract topics like what could be coming up with this square between Mercury and Neptune for you right now. This is a perfect time for you to do basically uh, the mental gymnastics that it would take to really understand some of these deeper aspects, some of these fearful or some of these illusionary aspects of your life that could be coming up to the forefront right now, okay? But moving forward, more supporting aspects. The the, the strongest supporting aspect that I saw today is Mercury conjunct Venus. Now, this, this conjunction between Mercury and Venus starts in Taurus, as it has been, but then Venus moves into Gemini at two, around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this afternoon on the 1st of June. Okay, so what you really value, your true sense of values, um, uh, understanding what it is you truly value in life, what it is you really find um, beauty in life in terms of 
I, I hope I said that correctly, but that could be really on the forefront of your mind right now. There's a hyper, there could be a hyper focus on what you're spending your time and your energy on today. Okay. And that was definitely a thing for me this morning because I woke up this morning feeling like I needed to start getting, I really do want to get back into doing monthly readings, but I also want to incorporate more astrology into that. And so I'm in, I'm, here's that Mars and Gemini situation. I'm indecisive. Do I start doing monthly readings like I did in the past, or do I just wait and continue doing this this research and, and learning how to really uh, work with astrology in this way before I start doing monthly readings. And in terms of what I value, I value bringing true beneficial content to the collective. I find value in really helping you guys understand, helping all of us understand what's really going on around us energetically and astrologically. And so because I want to bring both of those into alignment before when I really start doing monthly readings again, to me, that's a sign to say, especially with Mars and Gemini, whoa, hold on. Let's not take too much action right now because of this indecisive energy. And let's really work on focusing intellectually and understanding what's going on and what's coming up. Okay, so that makes more sense. All right, so there's that. The next thing I want to talk about is a, yeah, a ne the next supportive element that I want to talk about is uh, Mercury trining Jupiter. Now, tr a trine is, is a beneficial aspect. A trine is considered to be um, a gift, right? And Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion enjoy bliss, blessings, happiness, um, and good luck and all that kind of stuff, right? So with this trine for Mercury, between Mercury and Jupiter, the things that you're thinking about here really could lead you in a very lucky direction. Luck is on your side, but do not expect anything to happen too quickly. Like I said, this is more of a time of intellectual pursuits rather than actual physical pursuits, okay? This feels more like a time of introspection and learning, not really of taking action. Um, so in terms of, especially with Mars still, I'm sorry, Mercury still being semi-sextile with Pluto, which is the planet of death and rebirth, right? You have, whatever it is that you uncover in your life right now, whatever it is you start to understand about yourself right now, whatever fears and illusions that are coming up and the subsequent understanding that you are able to gain from it right now, this supportive trine between Mercury and Jupiter is really going to help you expand on that, really help you draw out some lucky aspects of this situation, okay? So as you're moving through these energies, really focus on your highest intention, the best that you can focus on, the best result that you can come up with in your mind at this time. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen this way, but if you keep your mind focused on the positives, the blessings, where it is you truly wanna go, how it is you wanna feel, this trine between Mercury and Jupiter is really going to help you get yourself in that direction, okay? Uh, last thing I want to really look talk about here, um, you do have a semi-sextile between Mercury and Mars right now, so there is potential to really work through what is boiling up from the depths, but you have to choose to face it and push through it, okay? If you're really going to take advantage of this semi-sextile between Mercury and Mars. Now, like I said, Mars is in Gemini, so it's a great time for intellectual pursuits, but not necessarily for action. And use this time wisely for intellectual and conscious understanding, right? The last thing I wanna talk about, you do have an we do have an opposition between Mars and Pluto. Death and rebirth in terms of your sense of direction, action, and willpower, okay? Again, this is not a time for too much action. Instead, focus on your conscious awareness and the understandings that you can gain from that conscious awareness, yeah? I just wanna see if there is a card that wants to come out here for the collective. I am using the Moonology deck. If there's a card here, do we have a card here for the collective, please, Spirit, in terms of these shifts and these changes? that are happening astrologically. All 
Okay, we have a few cards here. First, we have the full moon in Leo. Don't let your pride get in the way. Now, this mood, this speaks very clearly, in, in, in my opinion, this speaks very clearly to all of the fears and the illusions that are coming up that seem to be leading us in a brand new direction. But if you allow your ego to stop you and say, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, if you, will, if you, if you stay in a fixed energy and don't allow yourself to shift and change and grow with the situation, then that's going to really hinder you, okay? Allow your ego to take the back seat and really just face the illusions or the fears, the Neptunian energy. I'll face that with a clear and open mind. Don't allow your pride or your ego to stop you in your tracks and say, no, I don't have to deal with this, blah, 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 whoop de whoop and all that boo shit, right? <laughs> right? Okay, um, so but this is happening because your commitment is being tested because your dreams need a practical plan and nothing is yet set in stone. Okay, and that makes quite uh, that makes perfect sense because no, nothing is set in stone right now. And in order for your dreams to have a practical plan, you're going to need to go through the illusionary aspects of things and clear that up. But in order to do that, you do have to step out of your comfort zone. All right, guys, pause for a second. Yeah, this card of nothing is yet nothing is set in stone is so incredibly perfect right now just because of it's that indecisive energy that Mars and Gemini energy, not exactly knowing how to move forward, which direction to take or even how to you might have you might know of or feel like you know of a direction that you want to move in. But it's like, but how do I even do that? Like, what are my first steps? You have to go through this. We have to go through this intellectual period right now first of understanding what all of this means for us on a personal level and what is, you know, what's really coming up for us in order to really understand how we're going to move forward in the future. Because this is not about doing things the same old way. A collect, you know, a big collective energy right now is breaking free from traditional aspects of our lives and creating something new, right? Expanding on who we truly are with this uh, Plutonian energy and even, um, what was it? The Aquarian energy. It's just, it, uh, I'm getting lost in all the sauce here, but, but there is a big element of self-discovery understanding oneself and becoming more authentic all right so in order to do that we have to go through these periods right now where we understand where it is we currently are potentially even how we got there but then from there trying to figure out how to move forward in a more authentic way all right uh, i'm shuffling up the tarot deck now i'm using the witches tarot five more shuffles okay one Two, three, four, and five. All righty, y'all. So let's get into this here. What's going on with the collective right now? I actually, let's, I want to talk about this uh, uh, Neptunian energy, the illusion, you know, the fears. That's what this really feels like, the illusion and the fear. Okay, so what's going on with this Neptunian energy, with this square between Mercury and Neptune? What do we have a chance to understand here, please, Spirit? Yeah, look at that. Look at that, you guys. Okay, overall energy right now is the tower. The ta I told you, the tower with the ace of swords. The tower, <laughs> the ace of swords, the star, and the world. Okay, those are the cards that have come out face up. There's one more card that's come out face down. Oh my God, it's so perfect. This is exactly what I'm talking about, you guys. One card has come face down and that's the two of wands. This is Mars in Gemini. You're at a crossroads right now. 
And in order to be able to how to move forward in this crossroads for you, you have to come to an understanding of what is illusionary, what needs to come down. Okay, Ace of Swords with the Tower. Underneath the Tower is Temperance to the Magician, to the to the devil, you guys. Okay, it's this devil energy. It's the confinement from the past. For some of us, this is even a level of codependency. And the codependency that I'm picking up on right now doesn't even necessarily need to be on in a romantic level, on a romantic level. What I feel like this is, is very much what we've been talking about with Saturn being in retrograde right now, moving through, moving retrograde through Capricorn. This devil energy or this confinement or this codependency feels like a code uh, feels like a codependency on your identity in terms of how everyone else sees you, how the collective sees you, how people see you, how society sees you. Five of Wands. And that's exactly what is coming to an end right now. Death. All right, these are all cards that are at the bottom of the deck here, all right? But this is what's standing in the way of you truly manifesting what is right for you from a more authentic level, the magician. And thus, whatever needs to come down for you right now, whatever illusions are being broken for you right now, or, or you have the, the potential to break these illusions, all of that is in service of greater balance for yourself greater spiritual harmony for yourself with temperance, all right? Now, Ace of Swords to the world to the star. Or you could say Ace of, star, Ace of Swords to the star to the world. I feel like these two energies, the star and the world, are interchangeable. Either you... It starts here with your conscious awareness, okay, Ace of Swords, with the truth that you come to during this time period. That truth is either going to lead you to, towards greater healing, which will then end the cycle for you, or that truth will end the cycle for you, which then leads you to greater healing. But ultimately, this, wish, this healing is definitely setting you on a path towards wish fulfillment, okay? Greater wish fulfillment, and that wish fulfillment comes from a sense of authenticity, which in I, what I'm hearing is, in, 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 in large quantities, seems to be lacking in some way, okay? How do we want to move forward here? Just another pull on the Two of Wands, and then we'll get clarity. Or Oracle Guidance. All right, I'm going to get another pull on the Two of Wands here. I'm going to use this same deck, all right? What can you tell us about the Two of Wands, please, Spirit? What do you want us to know? Yes. Yes. Oh, shoot. What's going on? What's going on with the... Hold on a second, you guys. Okay. So, the next card... What, what's come out here next? We're, we're talking about the Two of Wands here? Okay. Um... What's come out in conjunction with that, there's two cards. One of them is face down and is sideways, but the other one is face up, and it's karma, which in this deck is the same as uh, judgment. But when this card came out, my focus was drawn to the moon. You see how the moon is... I think the moon is eclipsing the sun here. Yes, but there's an eclipse on this card. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this, this karma card or judgment was the moon. And I, and I just paused because I was like, wait a second, what's going on with the moon right now? Because I was so focused on what's going on with Mercury, I didn't even look at the sun and the moon. Um, and so I looked, and by about 11 a.m. on the 1st of June, today at least, if you're watching this on this day, the sun and the moon are going to be squaring each other. That's another difficult aspect. So part of the reason why there is some sort of indecisiveness here is because 
there's there's looking to be and maybe this is and this could absolutely be why like for me example why i felt like i woke up on the wrong side of the bed and why i felt like i'm in i'm in i'm struggling between how i used to do things and how i want to do things moving forward that is literally a representation of the moon and the sun squaring each other because your inner reality of represented by the moon and your outer reality represented by the sun are, are squaring up, are butting heads, okay? And that's causing you to rise above, to reconcile or rectify some of these energies within yourself, to rise above here. Now, what's come out with that and ended up reversed, face down, King of Swords. But then overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands to the Ace of Pentacles. But... So there's a new beginning here, either both a new creative pursuit and a new business opportunity or a new financial opportunity or one or the other. But quite frankly, I feel like whatever it is you can reconcile within yourself when this moon and the sun and the moon uh, squares each other around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time today or whenever that energy hits you, quite frankly, um, the reconciliation or the rising above will will help to or will lead you or influence you to choose a direction that is probably going to be financially lucrative for you. But right now, there's a whole bunch of illusions surrounding all of that. Seven of Cups. And you're needing to go within and do the work. Eight of Pentacles, Queen of Cups to understand your emotional reality, right? Because this is representative of the moon. The Queen of Cups here is representative of lunar energy. Yes? The Queen of Cups... Uh, symbolizes cancer, cancerian energy. Cancer is, is ruled by the moon. This is lunar energy right here with the queen of cups, but you've got to do the consistent work. Eight of pentacles, knight of pentacles, in order to actually see this change happen for yourself. Wheel of fortune, all right? But you do have the king of swords here. Now, the king of swords came out sideways and it did come out face down, but when I turned it over, it was in reverse here. Not seeing something clearly. I want to I wanna clarify this King of Swords in reverse. I, I kind of feel like the King of Swords in reverse is an energy that you're coming out of. Uh, lack of understanding or seeing something from a different point of view that was not beneficial to you. I feel like you're in the process of turning the King of Swords upright. But also you may be having trouble seeing things as they truly are right now. Well, duh, Neptune. Mercury is squaring Nep... Is squaring Neptune? Is that what I said? Yes, Mercury, Mercury is squaring Neptune. So I do feel like whatever is happening for you at this moment, it's giving you the opportunity to turn the king of swords right side up or turn this element or this ability to see things clearly or see things as they truly are upright. So yes, part of this, this illusion or part of this lack of, of direction or this indecision is coming from a place of you needing to reconcile this within yourself, healing this within yourself and see things as they clearly truly are most likely in terms of your truer sense of authenticity so that you can choose it oh, well so that you can choose a direction all right but let's talk about this king of swords specifically i'm going to give this two more shuffles one let's get some more um clearer uh clarity here and this is two all right king of swords in reverse what clarity can you provide us with in terms of this energy please spirit That's enough. Knight of Swords is at the bottom of the deck, overall energy. I like that because this is the energy that's going to help you break free from the illusions. Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords came out crossing the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is representing your sense of spiritual stability, creative stability, a sense of uh, sol solidity, solidarity within yourself. Okay? You have this with Yep, look at that. You have this with the Eight of Pentacles and Judgment. So this is symbolizing your freedom, 
At least the Four of Wands is symbolizing your freedom. It's symbolizing your stability, your groundedness within yourself, and your ability to, to trust yourself, trust the universe, and actually do what it is that you love to do. But this Eight of Swords energy, this confinement, this mental confusion, this mental um, prison, the prisons or of society and social opinion and all that, public opinion and all that, is what keeps you from this sense of stability here, all right? So with this working through this King of Swords energy in reverse, working on seeing things clearly as they are and rising above, rising to a higher point of view, uh, rising to a more authentic point of view, uh, I'm sorry, a more authentic place within your life, you're going to just, you're going to just need to Continue to allow this Knight of Swords energy to help you break free from this confinement, from this uh, from this burden, the Ten of Wands, doing all the things, carrying all the things that are being responsible for things that you never needed to be, never wanted to be, or never should have been responsible for or carrying to begin with. Continue to allow this Knight of Swords energy, this intellectual energy, this Mercurian energy to set yourself free, but you have to do the conscious work, eight of pentacles to judgment, okay? This is all about rising above. This time period right now, whether this is just this day for you or the next few days moving forward, I would say probably until we reach the 9th of June, which is when we have a trine between Mercury and Saturn coming into play, which is going to be another truly beneficial aspect for you, even though it may not look like that on the surface, because yes, Big Papa Saturn tends to be a tricky energy to work with, a cha very, very challenging energy to work with. It's very supportive, okay? So use this time period right now to work on the aspects that you need to work on to rise above and to work on seeing things clearly instead of being in an illusion-based reality, which is what the square between Mercury and Neptune is bringing up for us right now. Woo! That's some, that's some deep shit, y'all. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's close this out. I'm wanting to get Oracle guidance from the Sacred Geometry Oracle. Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle today. Okay. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. <clears throat> I love this. We have card number 26, Empowerment. The frequency of empowerment supports our ability to, to show up fully and completely, uniting us with others in the deep trust that we are all connected through the same source. But what this is really saying here is we are being supported right now with the ability to show up for ourselves, to be fully aware, or at least to go through the process of becoming more fully aware of things that may have been just hiding underneath the surface, okay? We are being supported in, in and and. Yeah, we're being supported in this sense of gaining this empowerment by getting control over some of the illusionary and fearful aspects of your life right now. Let's read from the book here and see what this says. Empowerment refers to the process of enabling <clears throat> or giving power to, and we typically associate power with strength. In the new energy, however, strength not only refers to the totality of everything that makes us strong on the outside, like our physical form and shape, 
but includes the inner qualities of wisdom, balance, flexibility, adaptability, and courage. Our true power is deeply rooted in our knowing of who we are, our connection to source and self. When we are clear about who we are, we can be clear about what we are here to do. This clarity is empowering. In the empowerment image, we see human shapes with their arms over their heads, referring to the state of completeness that every human can reach on their own. They also show us the power of our connection because we are all connected to the same source. We can overcome any perceived differences and combine our power toward a more conscious reality. All the shades and gradations of blue refer to our ability to express ourselves in the world. Blue is also considered to be the color of truth. The red in the center refers to our ability to ground and identify ourselves in the physical world. Red stimulates courage, strength, power, and determination. And the yellow balls emerging from the middle refer to the inner power that flows from our center onto the grid of the flower of life, the basis of our form-based reality. So there is a serious amount of empowerment that you are able to tap into when working through these illusionary Neptunian aspects of your life. Yeah. If you want to get more information or understand more about what who Neptune is in terms of astrology, I highly recommend that you guys do a little bit of research and read up on that because that could really help you in this time period. But with that said, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yep. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>